Hey, how's it going today? And I'm excited to bring you this tutorial on how to make a forest with a volumetric fog lighting effect. So to get started on this, you need to be, create trees to create your forest. And you can come into this website here and the creator, Denise, has this plugin, DP Vidor, I think it's pronounced. And you just download this and that'll get you started. And then you install it as a plugin. After you do that, you should be able to make some trees. He offers all these tools and plugins for free, but I do encourage you to donate to him. I've donated to him and I think he's doing an awesome job. So we want to reward him for that. But anyway, in Modeler, after you've loaded your plugin, it should come in over here and you'll see it under here as a DP tree tool. Now, just to get started on this real quick, we're gonna click on the second layer we're going to come into create. We're going to go to the ball tool and we're just going to click and drag here. And we're just going to make a little ball, something like that. And we probably want to center this. You can hit F2 to center it and then hit T for your T tool. And you just drag this up straight up like that. Then what you got to do is uh, we'll zoom in here a little bit. You can hit A and come in underneath the ball like this. Make sure we're on the polygon and uh, we'll drop our tool here at the space bar and just select a bunch of polygons under here like this to create an opening for the branches to come in. So just something like that. And it doesn't have to be perfect and then you just hit delete. And then we'll come back to this position and we'll zoom back out a little bit there so we can see what's happening. Then what we're gonna do is we're going to click on the first layer, hit shift, and then click on the bottom of the second layer so we can see what's going on. Then we'll come into utilities, we'll go into additional, we'll go to DP tree tool, which is right there, and then we'll go into numeric, and here it is right here. Now we don't want 250 branches, I can tell you that right now, so we're gonna put in just something like, uh, let's just say 11, and I think everything else can kind of stay the same, and you just click, oh, we want, instead of line, we want it to be sub D, and we'll just go make tree. And there's our tree, as simple as that. Isn't that awesome? Okay, so now I'm gonna click on the second layer here. I'm gonna hit delete, get rid of that. And then I've got, I'll click on the first layer here and there's my tree. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save this, of course, save the object. And I'll call this tree seven. And I'm gonna go save. And then I'm gonna go to save. I like to hit save all objects too, just to be on the safe side. And then we'll go in here. I'm gonna click synchronize layout and then I'm gonna click send object to layout and hopefully it'll show up there. Every once in a while it doesn't and you gotta come back in, see, and go back into modeler. So let me go back into modeler again, synchronize layout, send object. Uh, sometimes it doesn't always come in the first time. I'm not sure why. Okay, so now we're just gonna come in here to camera view and there's our tree. And actually, that's not a bad looking little tree. I, <laughs> you've got to play around with it. A lot of the how great this effect looks it depends on the actual structures of your tree. So you can really come up with a lot of different varieties. And it's it's a fun tool to play around with. So anyway, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to we're going to create some instances of this tree, several instances of it, as a matter of fact. So we're going to click on properties here. We're going to go to instance here. Instance generator, we're gonna double click on that. It pops up here. We're gonna add object, our tree, double click there. We're gonna really drill down. For this, I'm gonna put down polygons. I know for a fact I'm gonna to wanna to offset this a bit. So on the X and the Z. So why don't I say 15 there and I'll say 15 here. Kind of maybe, maybe a little bit more than that. Maybe, let's do, let's do 30, 30 and 30 and see what else we can do here. For rotation, let's put in 180 there just to get some variability in there. And I think for scale, we can also change this here. We can change this to let's say 150 just to add some variability in there. And then as far as instances go, well, let's try, let's try 200 and see what happens. That's a lot of trees just like that, right? So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go into rotation here and just kind of turn toward the trees. And then I'm going to, I'm gonna punch in a little bit here. So go to camera and I'm gonna go in on my Z axis and zoom in a little bit like that. Maybe I'll go a little bit to one side a little bit more. You know, just play around with this. It, this is completely 
arbitrary how I'm moving around or choosing to move around. And before I do anything else, I'd like to reposition my light back there. So let me go into the uh, top view here. And I let me pull out a little bit here. So I really want to be on the other side, my light. So make sure I'm on my light. And I'm just going to pull my light over here on the back side of all that. Let me just go into light view so I can see kind of what the what I'm looking at. And let me let me just go ahead and, and I should see the trees right there. Okay, there they are. So I'm just going to come up here because I want this to be like the moon in the background. But I am going to be switching out the light here in a minute. Okay, so now I can just go back to camera view and I can see my light right there. Perfect. So now we just got to adjust some settings. We're almost done. So to get started, we're going to go into properties here. While I'm at it, let's just go ahead and switch to VPR. And this kind of gives us a good idea of what we're looking at right there. We're going to change this light to spherical. And we got that done. And then the other thing we're going to do is we're going to come into backdrop and we're just going to go ahead and turn off the gradient there. So we don't see anything right now. And if we really want to start seeing things again, we're going to have to go into render, render properties, volumetrics. And this is really where the magic happens. If you hit volumetric scattering, you hit that. And that's what really creates a lot of the effect there. This kind of ghostly haunting effect. Now to really get some nice look on this, the coloring of it, if you go into edit nodes, you'll come in here and you'll type in black body radiator. And we're going to double click here. And there this is and you double click here and you can change the colors by adjusting the temperature and we're going to drag this into all three of these right here so we're going to drag the radiator into all the illuminate lumin illumination and the volumetric color and when we come out you're going to see we got a lot different look going on there which is really cool now the only other thing you need to do is for some settings additional settings what we're going to do is i had to actually some notes on this so for your volumetric here we want to bump this up to 16 and for our spherical samples here we're going to drop this down to two and we're going to make this 10 24 and then for our size we want this to be four meters and there's that see what else do we have here we can also bump up our the brightness of our light here quite a bit and that has a huge impact and let's see what else we're going to go into gi options and let's see what we got in there for gi options give me just a second okay so for rays we're going to bump this up to 16 we're going to turn off sample backdrop and click on isbg sampling and we're going to bump this up to 1024. And as far as I know, all the other settings are pretty much default. I don't really see. You can always turn on uh, the noise filter as well. And that is it. There's a lot of settings on here you can just play around with. It's just a really super cool look. I think you're going to have a lot of fun with it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually create uh, my next video I'm going to do my running robot <laughs> through the uh, forest. I've been in the last video I did a running robot and I realized there was no foreground object to see he was the the distance that he was going. It just it was there was a sun off in the background, but there was nothing, no foreground elements to run against to create any drama. And I thought, well, how cool would it be to have a robot running through a forest like this? And then you could put the camera on the other side of the trees and really get that parallax, a really super cool effect. So that's what I'm working on right now. Thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it.